Um, basically, we've uh, got the audio working now, which is great. Uh, there was a bit of a struggle, but um, uh, let's get into what this live stream is about. We're using this guy right here. And uh, that here is the Elgato Camlink 4K. And the Camlink 4K is a, um, is, is a streaming card. It's a capture card that works very well with the Canon ESR um, and with the El Elgato, um, uh, sorry, with the uh, MacBook Pro or Mac computers running OBS. And I've linked these all together. So uh, basically there was some struggles using this fellow right here, which is the, Ultra, uh, the uh, Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Um, the thing with the Blackmagic Design Unit, and these two units right here, these are the boxes. Um, they're, they're great little units for, they both work. Uh, it was just the Ultra Studio was perhaps a little bit more finicky as far as getting it to, um, to work with the Canon. But once I got the settings right, using the exact same settings on the camera, which I'll share with you in another video here, on the, um, as, same as what we've used on the Black Magic with the uh, with the Elgato device. Um, the the big issue I'm having with using both of these devices is actually uh, the audio, and it's not that the audio isn't there. It's that the audio that we're using is actually picking up a lot of fan noise from this computer, and you're, you can hear this now. Um, there is a loud fan noise from this mid-2015 MacBook Pro. Um, this computer has a lot of RAM. Uh, it's, it was very upgraded uh, when we bought it, and it has an i7 processor with quad core, so it shouldn't have so much trouble. So it's probably um, a combination of um, all these tabs open in Safari, um, it has uh, multiple processes running in the background. It's probably shutting down some software. That's probably going to be the, the deal. Um, this is the Ultra Studio recorder, the mini recorder. Um, it's a very elegant device. It is very solid, made out of metal. It's a big chunk of metal. Feels really good. And it has an SDI in, which is this little, uh, I'll point that out to you right here. This is the SDI in on this end. And so if you've got a true um, film camera um, or an SDI out through a, uh, a box on attached to your uh, digital camera, you can actually put in that high, uh, that um, signal through there rather than using the HDMI. And they're both on the ends there. So both, uh, you can see it there, you can see both uh, HDMI and the SDI on the end here. On this side is the, um, uh, is the Thunderbolt port. And uh, again, very robust device. We will use this. This will probably be main camera, uh, adding the second camera up above, um, and we'll probably use this uh, Elgato device, the the Camlink 4K, for the for the second camera above, um, which will probably be um, this older GoPro that I have. Now I tried. I was looking at using my Osmo Mobile, um, but the Osmo is actually um, a little bit different to set up, and I just want to do a quick setup with the HDMI cable, and so that uh, worked on the, uh, it's a um, uh, GoPro uh, Hero 5 Black, um, so it shoots 4K, it, it gives you that. Um, but uh, for some of the stuff that we want to do, this will work, and also when we uh, lend it out and uh, work with other, uh, other creators and producers, um, should be a, a great little tool to use. But I wanted to show you how the Game Link works, or sorry, the um, Camlink 4K from Elgato. Lucky enough to find one um, available, picked it up in a day and it was here. I didn't have to wait and do this long, long stretched out uh, order and delivery process online. Um, and so it was, it was great to find that right here in Vancouver and uh, to utilize it quickly. And that's the thing, quick is the key operative phrase here. This unit basically, um, is plug and play. I literally hooked up the uh, HDMI cable to the unit, plugged it into a USB port on the side of my MacBook Pro, turned on the camera, again had it at the the fixed 24p setting um, on my um, on the uh, ESR, 
and uh, set up OBS with that as well. I also utilized a, um, uh, we've also used a, um, a neutral picture setting on here, just in the camera settings. And um, so basically putting that all together um, has given us this. And again, the audio is a key here. So I'm trying to demonstrate using this on an older Mac. Uh, I will try it on a newer computer and see if there is any difference. I think there will be. I, I think you're going to see uh, a significant difference uh, using a uh, machine that isn't overburdened. This machine should do it actually if we removed, if I removed a lot of the software and operations running in the background, that fan would not be um, as bad. But right now, as I look at this, OBS is using 174.4% of the CPU. So uh, that's not great. Uh, that's definitely not uh, something you want to see. And there, there's got to be something behind that. So we're going to do a little digging there. Um, but otherwise, I'm very pleased with this. I will try it on the iMac that I have in the other room and, and see if um, we notice a little bit of uh, difference there, although that that, that unit has a fan that runs quite a bit too. It could be from video editing software or whatever that's running in the background. Um, but um, the other option, of course, is to have this laptop further away and uh, use the camera, pull the camera towards me a little bit, maybe on a tripod, and use it um, sitting further back. And that's probably the way we'll end up doing it. It's just uh, too much of a challenge to use it this way, and so I'm probably not going to use it like this anymore. Um, as far as the um, the image quality goes, I mean, once we check this video, once I review it afterwards, uh, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if there's any choppiness or anything. But I think video quality wise, image quality wise, I've I've um, I can compare the two, and I think they're both very good tools. Um, we also have the Black Magic um, ATEM Mini coming. Uh, this week and I'm going to try that out as well. And I think the ATEM Mini is going to be something that so we're going to see is uh, quite uh, useful in the sense that we could do the multicam setup without actually having to have two devices which may pull less resources. And I'm also going to look finally at something outside of OBS um, if it's the if the resources are going to become an issue here if the use of resources by obs is going to be a problem uh i'm going to have to switch tools but right now i mean i i love the um the setup in obs the way it works it seems to be uh, a very handy way to do things so i'm hoping that it's not a big issue but if it is um we're going to have to do something else so um that's kind of where we're at, where i'm at with this and i'm hoping that we can avoid dumping OBS. I think the tool is brilliant. I think we have to work on the computer here and uh, get that approved. So what do you guys think? What do you think of the image? Uh, again, simple with this unit, um, with this uh, Camlink 4K, you literally can plug and play your camera, your EOS R. Um, which is great because you can use it. I was shooting in log mode before as well. So I did a couple of clips um, straight out of camera and log, which looked really crisp, but of course washed out um, straight through here because that's what it was picking up. And um, I had just done that by default by accident. Um, gonna run it in the HD mode from here on in and see if that makes any difference. Um, yeah, so that's it. Tell us what you think down in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, let me know. I am gonna be posting another video with the settings, the exact settings on the EOS R to get this clean HDMI out and how to utilize that, how to set it up. Um, again, literally in OBS, there's a lot of tutorials out there and the basic setup guide on uh, OBS's website will guide you through that as well as far as what to set, how to add um, an audio element and a video element, a capture device or camera and, and what have you. Um, I'm not going to play with the multiple captures just yet or multiple feeds until we can straighten out this noise issue because I'm an audio guy. I hate bad audio being, you know, concerned about just hearing a little bit of hiss, but this is over the top. I mean, I can hear it very clearly, so this mic can hear it. I know it. Um, but anyway, besides that, tell me what you think. And uh, like I said, any questions, please do ask.